got your guard, Captain. Anxious and tactics. We best watch our step, Captain. She knows we're coming. warn you not to set foot in here until the job was done? There's nothing to discuss. I can fix Adrena time without you, and certainly without Mother. You wasted your time coming here, and worse, you wasted mine. But I won't let anything stand in the way of progress. You'll surprise me, Captain. Once we fix the chemistry of Adrena time, the Marauder problem will simply take care of itself.
But a lot of folks are gonna suffer in the meantime. And you don't even know if it'll work. If you fix it, there's always the possibility you'll make it worse. The days of the old Adrena time are numbered, and marauders are bound for extinction. Insane people addicted to drugs are mother's problem. Am I to be held accountable for her mess? It ain't about who's accountable. Those people are hurting, and they're hurting others. You could help them. Besides, Mother is determined to ruin everything she touches. First Adrena time, then our family, and now my ambition. Stand down? I think not, Captain. People want to buy clean drugs, and I want to sell them. Do you know why it was a disaster? Rushed production, cut corners, and a failure to communicate. Mother's mistakes, not mine. My drug will be the pride and joy of the Ambrose family. And if we pick up where Gorgon left off, then the human testing phase is well ahead of schedule. Farewell, Captain. If it wasn't already obvious, you're fired. You finished it, Captain. You've put Gorgon down once and for all. I only wish that Minnie had seen reason. The good we could have done together. Join me for a toast in the drawing room. I do believe you're due a reward. After all we've seen of this lady, are we sure this ain't a trap? Hand to law, Captain. I mean you no harm. Your reasons are your own. I understand. Nonetheless, I owe you my thanks. Let me offer them to you in person. I'll have a drink waiting. Ah! 
Nicely done. Captain, I believe a celebration is in order. The Gorgon Project is dead, and we are not. Why does it feel like we've done this before? Speak up, Captain. I can't hear a thing when you mumble like that. <laughs> to time, then. And... Burying the past beneath ten tons of toxic rubble. Shall we toast? Your motives interest me less than your actions, Captain. What matters is that when forced to choose sides, you picked Halcyons. <laughs> All right, you've made your point. It's funny. When Spacer's Choice released Adrena Time to the public, and began the Marauder Crisis, and I sabotaged all the Gorgon facilities. I thought that was the end for me. Then you came along and changed everything. I find myself at loose ends now, Captain. The satisfaction of a job well done isn't enough for you? I'm only joking, of course. Please take this with my thanks. It's not much. But you deserve recognition for your efforts. I know your crew played no small part in this as well. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. I hope you take this life and do something better with it. It's just what we do, but we appreciate the acknowledgement nonetheless. Halcyon owes you both a tremendous debt. Well, it's time we stop looking back and turn our eyes to the stars. Where will the future lead you, Captain? I'd expect nothing less from the hero of Gorgon. In any case, I do believe this is the end. Law willing, Adrena time is dead for good, and the Marauders will die out with it. Goodbye, Captain, and thank you again. May the stellar wind be ever at your back. On my way.
Everything bad about Byzantium all in one place, with even less class somehow. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the Inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling has been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but... I don't believe it. I still don't understand why anyone would have it in for Ms. Helen. The fans were very upset by the weak plot contrivances in her latest offering, though that hardly seems a worthy motive. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Don't I know it. Reminds me of the shootout in the lobby between Odeon Pictures and Rotor Reels back in the day. And you wonder why nobody mentions Rota Reels anymore. It was. Both sides decided to film each other across the lobby. See which would fail first. Odeon Pictures and Mechanicals or Rota Reels employees. For some reason, the Rota people missed a part where they had to be at their cameras 24 hours a day. The final crew member passed out after about a week. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. Oh, come on! The launch would have been so swell! Rizzo's rented out the ballroom at the Grand Colonial and invited all those guests for just this purpose. Rizzo's ain't unveiled the product since the debut of Spectrum Ultraviolet. Invisible to the naked eye, and as it happened, prone to causing massive internal bleeding. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. You're certain? All right, then. Guess we can probably set you up with some spare uniforms if you must yours.
any idea how many kids? Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Hotel? I only ever seen a place like this in periodicals. Or that one episode of Agent Khan. I can't believe someone so famous as Halcyon Helen could meet a fate like this. So much opulence. ...while most of Halcyon suffers. I'll bet you ten bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt. We're... Welcome to the Grand Colonial. Black Hole Birdies disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be in... Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Constable Maria Keane. It's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. An extraordinary contraption. You'll love it. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. I work with the materials to which I have access. Halcyon has no shortage of rifles. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. That sounds strangely like scientism. <laughs> Expecting the doctrine of the OSI to have any bearing on reality is quite an assumption. Oh, goodness, no. I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. Yes. It's a magnifying glass, but an extraordinarily powerful one. It looks through the glass of reality itself. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. Amplifier, 
tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Footprint is a tailor-made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonio. This deduction appears... sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had a chance. It seems death is just another form of entertainment around here. Sure thing. Yep, be right over. I'm sorry, sir, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspe- Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the elevator in the lobby and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. Hello there, my inordinately esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode! What authorized floor can I bring you to? Next stop, the finest seat in the house! discrepancy detected near my the imprint left inside this suitcase matches the silhouette of halcyon helen's iconic handgun the needler the weapon was recently removed Thank you. 
Helen. Where did we go wrong? Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. That didn't mean for... <laughs> Inspector, I understand you've visited the scene of the crime. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. Halcyon Helen was more than a character. She was a brand. Her death will now be associated with Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. You understand why that worries me. I do not Spacer's choice as that market cornered. Back to the matter at hand. Tell me about your investigation. Your discretion is appreciated. I admit, I'm beginning to feel more confident in this arrangement. Here, I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. There is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly both. I agree with the sentiment behind your snide remark. Unfortunately, the Piraeus spaceport is Cedric's purview, not mine. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. 